Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. This video is about the basics of electrolysis. So electrolysis literally means splitting up using electricity. So lysis just means splitting up. And the electro part of the word is obviously the electricity part. So we're splitting up using electricity. And in electrolysis, we use electricity to split up a substance made of ions. So an ionic substance, and we split it up into its constituent substances. Here's a typical setup for the electrolysis circuit. There are two electrodes here and here that are dipped into the electrolyte. So this is the electrolyte. One electrode is positive and is called the anode. The other electrode is negative and is called the cathode. And the electrodes are normally made up of unreactive substances like graphite or like platinum. And that's in order to prevent unwanted reactions from taking place. And the electrolyte is the ionic compound that we want to split up and this ionic compound is either molten or it's dissolved in water dissolved in solution and this is to allow the ions to move around so in this electrolyte you're going to have positive ions and negative ions the ions are going to move to an electrode. The positively charged ions will move to the cathode and the negatively charged ions will move to the anode. And when the ions reach their electrode they will either gain or lose electrons and will be deposited as elements. Here's an example. Lead bromide is a solid and does not conduct electricity. But when you melt it, the ions can move freely and it can conduct. So our electrolyte is therefore molten lead bromide. And you can see here the ions that molten lead bromide is made of. You have the lead ion and the bromide ions as well. And when we turn on the current, the positive lead ions flow towards the cathode and the negative bromide ions flow towards the anode. So let's have a closer look at what happens when the ions reach the electrodes. So what happens when the lead ions reach the cathode is that they gain two electrons from the negatively charged cathode. So the lead ion will gain two electrons from the cathode making them lead atoms and the lead atoms are then deposited so they'll end up deposited at the bottom of this vessel here and we say that the lead ions have been reduced because they have gained electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons reduction is gain when the bromide ions reach the positive anode they lose one electron each to the anode and they become bromine atoms and the two bromine atoms immediately bond in pairs to become bromine gas so now we have bromine gas molecules forming at the positive anode and we say that the bromide ions have been oxidized and oxidation is loss of electrons and we can use this to remember what happens at each electrode we can use oil rig because oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons so that's what that stands for and it's a useful way to remember what happens at the electrodes we can also represent what happens at the electrodes using half equations. 
So each of the two electrodes has its own half equation. So at the anode, this would be the half equation. We have two Br minus, those are the two bromide ions. They lose an electron each, so minus two electrons, and they become a bromine molecule. At the cathode, we have a lead ion pb2 plus and it gains two electrons and becomes a lead atom so these would be the two half equations for this electrolysis reaction this is the oxidation half equation and this is the reduction half equation and because reduction and oxidation take place at the same time in electrolysis, it's often called a redox reaction. Now, if we carry out electrolysis in water, the situation is more complicated because the water itself is made of ions. We have the H plus ions and the OH minus ions, in addition to whatever's dissolved in the water. In this case, we have a compound of potassium, potassium chloride dissolved in this water. So there are two different ions which could be produced at an electrode. At the cathode, we have two positive ions, the potassium ion and the hydrogen ion, which are both positive and both could be produced at the cathode. And at the anode, we have the Cl- and the OH-, which could be produced at the anode. So which one is produced? Let's look at the cathode first. If it's a choice between this potassium ion and this hydrogen ion, then usually the less reactive one will be formed. In this case, hydrogen is less reactive than potassium, so hydrogen gas will form at the electrode, and the potassium ion will stay in solution. At the anode, what you need to know is that the halide ion, so chlorine or bromine or whatever the halogen is, the halide ion will take preference over the OH ion. So in this case, chlorine gas is produced and the OH ion will remain part of the solution. Okay, so that was just the basics of electrolysis. I hope you found the video helpful. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe and share and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.